Well, we've been doing the field work on the west side of Queen's Park, right near the Parliament buildings actually, but on the other side of the street, and just north of the Canadiana building. And it's an undergraduate course in archaeological field methods, so most of the people involved are generally students who, have, who don't have any previous uh, field work experience, and I'm co-teaching the course with uh, Dr. Sally Stewart. The course is called Archaeological Field Methods. It's, it's run by the Department of Anthropology at the University of Toronto, although it also receives some support from the Archaeology Centre at University of Toronto. Its principal goal is to teach students the kinds of methods that archaeologists use to locate sites and to excavate sites once they are found. We start out by training students to do mapping, so that the way they learn how to map a, a site topographically, as well as any uh, architectural features around, fences and trees and various things like that. Uh, we also teach them survey methods, including field walking a little bit, shovel test pit survey, and uh, testing by one by one meter squares before we go on to the kinds of uh, methods you would use for full-scale excavation. Among the skills that they learn that are specific to Ontario professional archaeology are such things as um, uh, what kind of shovel test pit intervals you would use in a typical situation, uh, what you have to do if you have a so-called positive test pit, and whether or not you have enough material there to designate the fine spot as a site. We'll look at things in the standards and guidelines having to do with the use of GPSs to locate sites and learn about the different stages of doing consulting archaeology in Ontario, in stage one, stage two, stage three, and stage four, leading from what some people will call desk-based research or archival research up through full mitigation or full excavation of a site, as sometimes happens when a significant site is likely to be damaged by development. I think it gives uh, them a good background for employability in contract archaeology or consulting. Uh, in that the students who graduate from the course should have a pretty good working knowledge of the, of the recently uh, implemented standards and guidelines. Uh, I think it also gives them skill sets that will be applicable in other archaeological contexts too, because we do talk about the differences between, between doing, say, Iroquoian archaeology in Ontario or historical archaeology in Ontario versus doing classical archaeology in Greece or in Near Eastern archaeology in, in Israel or, you know, or Syria or someplace like that. Uh, so I think uh, they get some some uh, good sense of how archaeological methods adapt to different kinds of situations as well.